Hey everyone, Cream Ray here, and today I have Tudor Obedo on with us. Uh, hello, hello. Tudor, how's it going? That's uh, going pretty good. Going pretty good. Resting a bit. Absolutely. I, you guys just finished your season. Uh, what would you think about the season that you guys just had? Well, for us, for the club, it wasn't that great, right? Our, our place in the table wasn't that good. Like, we expected way more. But it's a work in progress. It's a new team. It's a new league. I think uh, we have the potential to be really, really good. And it just these things take time, you know, to build a team. So I think it was a good season regarding the COVID stuff and restrictions and everything. It was pretty tough. We had to travel every few days. Uh, trainings were intense and we have we had to be careful with the training sessions as well because we had a game every few days so it was pretty tough it was uh it was kind of new to everybody you can see people like how they react to it because the covid thing is new and uh, very unpredictable so it was it was a tough season but also at the same time very fun and uh you know you got to experience something new and it's a season that you won't forget for sure absolutely and is it is this your first year playing with Ottawa? Yes, this is my first year playing with Ottawa and uh, playing professionally as well. Wow, wow. So, okay, so we're going to dig into this. This is awesome. But uh, first, I just want to thank you for joining us again today and congratulations to your first year. Uh, that's an amazing accomplishment. Um, so, can you first uh, please introduce yourself to the viewers? Okay, hey guys, I'm uh, well, Teo Dorobado, as you heard, and uh, I'm a goalkeeper for Athletic Ottawa. Awesome. So, how did you become uh, you know, a professional footballer. You said this was your first year, but how did it all come about? Well, it's kind of you know, like you don't really, I didn't really expect it. Like I was doing my, of course, I was uh, trying really hard training, playing here in Serbia. And uh, I was uh, going to school, started my uh, college, first year of college or faculty uh, for a psychologist. And my phone rang uh, and I got a gig at uh, Athletic Ottawa. Okay, it, it does help. Like I'm half uh, Canadian, half Serbian, so my Canadian uh, citizenship kind of helped. But yeah, awesome. and expect trying hard, and uh, yeah, got the gig. Awesome. So you said you're back in Serbia. You know, I've never been there personally. Can you please, you know, paint a picture for the viewers of what it's like to to be over there? What it is in Serbia? Oh, it's it's, it's a different vibe in here. People are just different. It's. Uh, I don't know, couldn't say it's uh, like as other European countries, but I don't know, it has its own thing. It's very hospitable. People are very nice. And, uh, well, it's my it's where my family is, right? So it feels like home. Absolutely. And you mentioned that you did go to school to study psychology. Are you, have you finished your degree or are you still completing? No, no, man. I'm, I'm, I'm 20. So it's uh, like I, I just began my first year last year. Then I got the call up to come to Canada and with COVID and everything, I just kind of had to put a pause on it. And But I will continue with that for sure. Like it has a big uh, place in sports, like psychology. So like eventually I would like to help other players and um, other uh, athletes to maybe uh, make it easier for them if they're going through something as if as I was or other athletes are. Like everybody is going... Everybody goes through something hard in their uh, career. So, you know, absolutely. Nice. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Um, you know, you mentioned COVID. It was, it was a, you know, an experience for everyone around the whole world. Um, but yeah, so with your first year of, are you in college or university? Uh, well, here it's like a faculty, right? So if you, it's a bit different than in Canada, like, in Canada, you guys have right majors, minors. Like you, uh, you choose what you want. Here, it's more like um, if I choose psychology, it's all psychology. Like you, you don't get anything else. Maybe English or something. Like, but other than that, it's like what you choose is what you get. If you study Serbian, you'll get Serbian. If you study like whatever it is, math, you only get math. So it's it's a bit different than in uh, Canada. Right, that's awesome. So, you know, you're 20, you're young. So are you 2001 right now? Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, you're in school, you're playing. How did, 
you know, how did the call come about? How did you get noticed, right? That's what players really want to know because obviously everyone wants to go pro, but not everyone gets that call. And this is the first time I'm hearing, you know, someone getting a, getting a call. So this, this is amazing. This is very unique. Yeah, well, hmm, that's a, I don't know, that's a good question. Like, of course, the percentage of people that, like, players that go pro is very small, but there is always a chance, like, of people spotting you. And, uh, like, like, no doubt, in every club, somebody is watching. That's, like, that's what all my coaches used to say, and everybody said it to me. Like, no matter where you play, like, you, no matter what game it is, like, always try your hardest, always try your best, because you never know who's watching, right? And maybe like the easiest game or the like some game you thought it was uh, not that important. Like, you know, somebody's watching and they'll see you. So I think the best uh, advice would be to just try your hardest every single game and every single training session. And like it would come eventually. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, too. That's a, that's a great point. So, you know, any game that you play, I'm assuming that you go into it hundred percent from what you're saying because the advice that you just shared with us of course yeah well <laughs> i this year haven't played too many games myself but I, I had a few games and of course i went into them 100 percent. like as a goalkeeper with when you know you're 20 years old like our like goalkeeper prime i would say it's uh like 25 26 right but I don't really believe in that. I think even with my uh, my age, I could still do very, very good, very, very good. But that's not up to me. Up to me is just to try hard and uh, to get that chance, right? Absolutely, great points. And you're still young, right? And 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 you're a pro. As you were just saying, there's very few that get to make their dreams a reality. So my question is, how did it feel when you once you signed with Ottawa? Oh man, it felt great. It was it felt really weird, right? Because I like of course I'm playing uh, football for a very long time, and uh, like you know you never really ex like yeah you want it. It's your goal, but you never kind of expect and can really imagine that feeling. But when it happened, when I was signing the contract, oh, it felt amazing. I was just uh, like felt really proud and really happy. Like it's just a feeling that. You, can't like can't experience twice i guess right and what things changed around you when, once you signed pro well my uh my view for uh like training and uh, maybe professionalism like i take it way more seriously now that i actually see the progress and see that all the efforts are uh like not worth it, but in place, take taking place now. And uh, I just kind of think I'm uh, more professional now. And uh, I wish I was this professional before that I, if I knew I was uh, going to sign a pro contract, but now that I know how it is in a, in the pro leagues, I, uh, I kind of know how to train and uh, I, I, um, oh, I ask way more from myself. Got it. So, you know, what advice would you share with the next generation of goalkeepers that want to go pro? Because this, you know, as a goalkeeper, there's only two or three spots, right? But for players, there's, you know, yeah. a, you know, at least fifteen to twenty. So it's it's even a smaller chance for goalkeepers to go pro. Yes, that that that's true. Well, you know, for the goalkeepers, I would say you always get a chance. Like, no matter what, if you're not a starting goalie, like I'm not. The starting goalie right now okay it's a new season coming but last year but you always get your chance like you always get a game you will always get some chances and just to take the most of what you get right it's not like you don't don't get your head down like keep your head up whatever happens and whatever you get like just be grateful and try your hardest and of course in the training sessions like you have to compete wherever you are whatever you're doing you really have to compete and somebody will spot you and you'll get the gig like for goalkeepers right now, maybe just concentrate like younger goalkeepers, concentrate on your maybe foot skills, passing. That's what modern goalkeeper is, right? It's like a center back. Got it. So what do you think stands out about you when you're on the pitch? That well, I would say my um like a good good size is my um uh, reaction. 
my uh, agility speed as a goalkeeper. Like, uh, I know that if there's a reaction save, I'm making those, like, 100%. And, uh, no, I, like, the fact that I always try and give 100%, that's what I think it's the best about me, and you can always see that. Like, whatever I do, it's 100 So, no, of course, there's still a lot to improve on, and we're working on that, but all in good time. Right. Not worried about yeah, that's amazing. You said you always put in 100%. Where does that come from? Hmm. Well, it comes from like my uh, future goals, right? Like I know what I want to accomplish and I know where my head is. And uh, that's why I go every day on that pitch and try the, try my best. Absolutely. So what comes with playing in, in a position as a goalkeeper? Like, you know, let's go a little bit back more in time. Were you always playing as a goalkeeper or did you play as an outfield, out, outfield uh, player when you were younger? I was, I was always a, goal, a goalkeeper. Wow, yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. I, um, I don't know. I just fell in love with it one time. I remember the day I became a goalkeeper. Like I was, real, I was a kid and uh, my old goalkeeper coach was showing me some goalkeeper, goal, goalkeeper drills. And there was no way I could have done them. Like I tried so hard and it's like the simplest thing, right? But you don't have the coordination as a kid. Like you didn't do it before. So it's really hard. And I was trying to do it like for days and I couldn't have done like no way. So um, it kind of, I kind of fell in love with it once I did it. And I just kept going, kept going, kept going. And yeah, I'm here now. Got it. Um, now let's go to over to the league, right? You know, the CPO is a fresh league. It's been here for three years now since 2019. Yeah. This is 2020. Yeah. Three years, right? Yeah. Three years. Yeah. Yep. Um, did you get a chance to watch the finals Pacific versus Hamilton? I mean, for uh, just, uh, it, I did watch it. It was one nil. Um, it was, uh, I expected like, I don't know. I expect more goals to be honest, but I don't know. I kind of like the result, you know. It's um, it would be too much for th three years in a row for him to get it. I don't know. I like it like this, and it's it's well deserved. It, it was a it was a nice goal. They kept their positive, like the whole the game. They were defending good. Hamilton missed some uh, some opportunities, but that's football, right? You never know what's gonna happen. You never know where you're gonna miss, what you're gonna get, and yeah, all fair. Right. I was there myself. It was a good game. Um, what things do you like about the league? That's my question about the Canadian Premier League. Um, there, there's a lot of good things about it. Like, if, uh, there's a lot of things you, we can improve on, and uh, but I won't get into that. Let's let's uh, get into the yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's very professional for uh, such a new league. Uh, it's well organized, and even this year they uh, they've been on top of, top of the COVID thing um like the bubble was pretty tough for all the players i would say but the point was to play all the like the teams that were there are far away from each other to play them there and uh i saw the point so it was pretty good the bubble and uh later on it was also all very professional very good in general i would just say um it's going to it's just going to get better Right, of course, absolutely. You know, this is a little bit of an off-topic question. You're back home right now. I mean, both places are home. What, what, what country do you prefer? Oh, my. Wow, that's... Uh, well, you know, like, uh, <laughs> all my life I've been in Serbia, right? So, like, I've never been to Canada my entire life. Like, this was the, my first year in Canada. So I didn't get maybe that full experience. I, uh, I was there to play football. So I didn't have uh, a lot of free time. Uh, so I, I, I was just in Ottawa. And of course, we're, we were traveling, but you don't get to see much of it when you're traveling for the games. But <laughs> yeah, I'm escaping the question right now. I'm trying to... <laughs> no, it's... Uh, well, Serbia is home for me. Like So like all my family is here. All my friends are here. Like all I know is here. Maybe in some time it will change. But right now it's where home is yeah for sure i mean I don't, I don't know how long you're in canada for but probably for a good amount of time maybe you'll start to maybe things will change possibly who knows yeah, i don't know it 
what sacrifices have you and your family made for uh, soccer or we should call it football? Football, yeah. <laughs> well, well, my family made a lot of sacrifices for me. Like they've been by by my side all the time and uh, they were they were uh, investing in me a lot and uh, I really like I would have to thank them. Like I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for them. But also, like, I, of course, it's up to me if I want to do it and uh, if I'm going to wake up and go train and go do all this stuff. So, like, you know, you have to like, give up a little bit of your social life. Like, you're going to train a lot. You're going to be in the gym, at the pitch. So, like, but uh, with good organization, you can, I think, do everything. So, it's cool, football, like, whatever. It's a bit harder now, like, that you're professional, like, but you can still do everything right and you know obviously you know how important is it for you to keep a healthy uh, body and mind oh wow <laughs> really important like you can really see the difference even when you're like i wasn't training i gave myself a bit of a break now that the season was over but maybe like a week and a half two and i got it back into it and even with that kind of a little like a smaller break you can see the difference, like you're getting tired quicker, like it takes more time for you to get in that condition. Uh, so it's really, really important that you keep your like standard, like uh, training every day and uh, like, I don't know, just, just being in that condition. And for the mind, I think that's even more important uh, because, you know, not every day it's going to be easy for you to wake up and uh, do your thing. Right. Oh, sorry. I thought it bugged out. So, yeah, I was uh, I was saying. So it's not easy for every like every day. Get up, do the same thing. Sometimes you feel like you don't want to do it. You want to quit, but it's the strongest that like the strongest minds get through it. Right when it's the hardest. Absolutely, and yeah. you know where does that come? You know, last three questions. Where does that come from for you? You know, you, now you're away from home. Is this your first time away from home for a long period of time or? Uh, yes. Well, I'm back home now, but yeah, it was, uh, it was my first time. Like it was, what, six, seven months, I think. Mm. It was, it was pretty tough. Um, we got through it, but you know, it's a good thing. I have, um, I have my family that's very supportive and we keep in touch every day. So it wasn't that hard. Got it. What advice would you share with the viewers right now about, you know, going overseas, playing with overseas? Well, it's not, it's not overseas players, but playing away from home, being away from family. What advice would you share with the viewers? Well, my main advi advice would be like just uh, have your goal in your head and think about it every day. Like what what you want to achieve and why you're there, like your, your future goals. And uh, it's just only a, a milestone, right? A checkpoint. Like that's that's what I would yeah. suggest. Wake up every morning with uh, that highest goal in your mind. Amazing. And you know, can you share something as like? Is there something different that you do off the field? Like, obviously, you know, we got the basic master basics on the field. What about off the field? Are you doing anything differently? Any mental training? Are you taking notes, affirmations? You know, your nutrition. You know, those types of things. Well, for nutrition, I would say like everybody has their uh, thing, like everybody takes care of that, right? I just think uh, the mind is the toughest part to take take care of. So for myself, I um, I do some meditation now and then. I uh, I take it seriously to have uh, some time for myself. Like every now and then, maybe go to a sauna, maybe go to wherever, wherever you feel comfortable, just uh, to take like maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, just with yourself, with your thoughts, organize them. And uh, tomorrow morning, you're going to feel stronger and uh, feel ready for the day. Awesome. And last one, what's your most memorable football moment in your life? Oh, my God. Okay, well, I had this question before, but it was like, it's the signing of my uh, pro contract. Like it's, it's, uh, it's a great experience. Like can't imagine no other, but also the other one would be um, getting called up for my, uh, for the youth national team of Serbia. So that was a really fun experience too. So I would say those two are pretty similar, but 
again, like signing the pro contract is just the best. Awesome. I mean, you're young, you have, you know, a lot of time to enjoy your career and, and reach the goals you want to reach. So again, congratulations. And yeah, the, you know, you're already doing big stuff. So the last um, five questions is the speed questions. Oh, well. you got to ask them quick, man. You're going to go fast. So, oh, wow. You ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go. It's, it's short and sweet. Who's your favorite team? Liverpool. Favorite player? Salah. Or Kiss, but let's go like let's go with right now, Salah. Okay, nice. Uh favorite cleats. Ooh. Uh the Predators. Predators? Yeah. I favorite, predators. Favorite food? Oh, favorite food. It's a Serbian thing. <laughs> What's it called? It's called Sarma. Okay, nice. Um, and favorite do you have a favorite artist right now? Favorite artist? Ooh, yeah, let's say Post Malone. Post Malone, okay, awesome. Awesome. Tudor, um, before, actually, where can the viewers find you, you know, for goalkeepers that watch this, that come across this, you know, how can they reach out to you? Can you um, shout out your Instagram? Or, or? If anybody needs everything, um, I'm on Instagram, right? Um, they can find me there. Yeah, that's about it. That's all I use. Got it. So they can just search up your first and last name and they'll find you on Instagram. Yes, sir. Awesome. All right, guys. So, um, Theodore, before we go, I want to just thank you again for taking the time to join us on the One Soccer Nation podcast today. Hey, thank you for calling me up, man. Absolutely.